Hi everyone, it's The Canny Crafter and today I am here with a long overdue video of how to make these little scrap trims for pages. And I also use them just to embellish some tags. So these little clusters I'd made, I think when I first started experimenting with paper crafting um, and I came across them because I did a huge purge of the craft space. Um, and I thought, well, it's about time to do something with them. So I thought I'd make these little tags. And I just used them as the backing. And I thought, well, they're cute. So, I forgot to get my scissors out. What we need is, well, what I'm using, should I say, is, hold on, I'll just move this out of the way. Might help my ass make some space. Receipts. So you've probably heard me say this before, but receipts aren't recyclable. Um, so every time I get a receipt, I just stick it to another receipt until I have <laughs> something like this. And I have used these previously for making like little collage strips and stuff. So we're basically just going to do the same thing, but on a smaller so I just roughly fold it in half along the length, lengthways, are we? Is that, is that right? So it's still got the same length, but it's half, half the size there. You know what I mean. You, you can see, you can see what I'm doing even if I'm not seeing it that well. So then just take your scissors and cut down that crease fold, whatever we are calling it. It's obvious I can't do words to do. So just watch. <laughs> watch what I'm doing rather than hear what I'm saying. I think I think that's the general the general mood of today's video. Oops. It doesn't have to be exact. Oh and that one just fell off obviously it wasn't stuck down very well okay so now we have two halves of one receipt roll let's just stitch stitch I'm not gonna stitch I'm gonna use print stick again this thing with words I mean who needs words Yeah, like it never happened. So we'll put one to one side, and by that I mean I'm going to chuck it on the floor. And now we need some papers. So for the papers, these are all the scraps from the Alice in Wonderland journal I made my sister. And um, will you have seen that video already? I think you will have. And just some extra little pink scraps I had floating around in my scrap drawer and what I did with some of the scraps was stamp on them just using a little rubber stamp and some ink I punched using a little paper punch and I embossed using an embossing folder. So we have different stamps on different bits of paper. I've included some vellum. Um, I've included some gold tones as well. And I think, oh and this as well. I found this little scrap and it's got a bit of vintage Alice in Wonderland book page on so I thought that was just a nice little nod and also some um, lace so this is from an old curtain this I got at a remnants bin at my local haberdashery I think actually all of these came from remnant bins unless they're very fancy I don't pay full price 
Now I'm going to be sewing those on, but obviously you can just use a fabric glue or even staple them on. So, the first thing I'm going to do is pull out a glue book and let's just pick a piece. Let's go with that one and start gluing. And as I say, I am just going to use Pritt Stick. And I'm trying very hard to stay in a frame. I know I have been wandering lately. We're just gonna put it down. And I don't want them to have a uniform edge. If I bring back in the dog journal, where's the page? As you can see here, it has bits sticking off over the edge and that is the look we are going for. So that is just a base. Yep, let's just stick it down. I don't know why I'm auditioning then. I think sometimes you have to though. So the vellum and the punched pieces I am going to layer on top just because I don't want to see the receipt through those. So that is why. Oh let's just put that big long bit there and then that's a whole big space covered up. just do the base first I think and then we can go on to our layering pieces and, and you can overlap like how I'm doing here because I thought oh that's a bit big I'll cut it down but I don't want a uniform line down the center I want to stagger them I just think that gives some extra interest. I'm getting glue everywhere. I should have another. <laughs> Let's put another glue book underneath. Is that okay for everybody? Another long bit there, do I think? Oh, let's bring in a piece of this gold. That's nice. I think this might be handmade for you. And we're just going to continue on decorating this up. I'll just square that edge off. Until we get to the end. And I'm not worried about the orientation of my papers. I think that one is too big. And if you feel like you have a piece that's too long, just cut it down. And I mean, these are just scraps. So I'm trying not to be sentimental about them. <laughs> I'm trying not to be sentimental about any of my papers. Um, because I have so much. I was I was really good, and I made a um, a cluster strip, and I actually used some paper I was very much attached to. So I'm gonna get me. Now my problem is that I'm beginning to see a lot of my paper is the same. It is this dotted paper because that was a, the off cuts of the pages and they were too long but I think we could possibly get around that by the things we lay out on top so as you can see I've got quite close together two green pages here green pages two green papers but see if I did something like that 
all like that, that's no longer an issue. But also remember that these are probably going to be cut up into smaller sections. I mean, you're never going to use it to the length that it is. So these are just, I mean, how big do you think those sections are? Those are like four inch sections and they were like six inch sections so don't get too hung up on your placement of your pages your papers should I say I'll just stick them down this is just supposed to be quick mindless crafting Ooh, I think I'm gonna need a new glue page where we're not hung up Oh no, that is ripped. Can we save it? Can we just stick it down and save it? Oh, new glue page. So yeah, and this is just a great way to keep on top of your scraps. So I was drowning, and I mean drowning, in a drawer full of scraps that were basically just from one project. So what I've decided to do is, at the end of a journal, when I've finished, I get one of these little plastic wallets and I put all of my scraps in there and then I make something like either like this or a full size one depending on the, si the size of the scraps that I've got and I make this <laughs> and then that way I'm sorry about my words today <laughs> I'm just trying to sort through some scraps as well. That way they're not going to build up. I'm not going to be overwhelmed by them. They're not going to accumulate. And it's a nice little thing to do because I feel like it's then like a nod to that previous project in your next project. So I'll be able to look at this and go, oh, well that came from that journal that I made my sister. And I think that'll be very sweet. It's too thin. We've got a bit of this piece. We've got a nice beige piece there. So if you guys have any ideas on how to bust some scraps, write them down below. Because these are like those little little fiddly scraps where they're neither something or nothing you can't but you can use them for clusters I suppose but you can't make them in envelopes you can't um, you know, they're never going to be whole pages they're really just going to be for collaging and this is a 
essentially collaging without the thought. I mean, I know I'm, I'm doing a lot of deliberating. I will admit that. <laughs> I've got to this end and I'm like, I don't know what to do. Hmm. Okay, so we'll just need one little piece for this. Nope. No. I should have a piece that's like just that size. And I haven't. Why haven't I got a piece that's just that size? I don't want that. It's too. It's definitely too close to the pink. Yeah, we'll just stick that over all of that. Okay, so let's. I've just got this edge here. I'm gonna cut off. We don't need that. Bye bye. Okay, so now we want to add in our extra pieces and I think something like that would go nice there and I've come to the conclusion this the trick stick is the best thing for vellum. so long it is falling off the desk. Okay. Um, something fell in me at this end or something die cut out. Or something that is a vellum die cut. Yes. I feel like I want something stamped about here. Yep, let's just go with that. Get another page out. And I think that's all I want paper wise. So now, let's have a look at this sort of stuff. So we do three of those there. And I have found if you just put a bit of print stick on these, it's enough to just place hold them until you get to the sewing machine. I see that now they're going to fall off, aren't they? Try it that way. And as you can see, I'm having my fabric hanging over the edge also. And 
I tend to put these, I've just realised this, I tend to put them over like where things join. I didn't realise that until now. I'm just taking the pen and tape off. flowers. Oh look at the mess we've got ourselves in. I'm going to try and do things like organised and neat. Okay so I feel like this bit's a bit naked of anything textural. So if I want something like that I don't think we do. Ooh, something like that, can't I? Oh, that's not nice. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is take this to my sewing machine, which I wish I could show you on camera with Willie, and I will stitch on these fabric pieces. But I think I will also do some decorative stitching in places as well. So I will be back. So it is done. So I've just done a variety of zigzag and straight stitching. I just went around that vellum because you can't even see it on camera. It's very, it was a bit lost. And then I just did some stitching in places on the paper just to give it a bit texture. And I stopped and started overhanging it and I didn't backstitch or anything because I just thought it's going to be cut up anyway so there you have it and as I say this can go on I'll just pull in my glue book the side of a page as a decorative edge or even a tuck spot wouldn't that be a cute little tuck spot or as a background for something um hold on so there's just one of the one of a cluster and you could have that as like a background that could be on a page or a tag or a tuck spot or something and it's just quick and easy I mean that took a lot I think 20 minutes or something we've used up the scraps and it's something you can have on hand I hung mine up on the wall beside me and you can just have it on hand as a go-to to grab. So I hope that's given you some inspiration. Oh, and that was the other thing I wanted to say. Obviously, you don't have to use rectangles. You don't have to use straight edges. I have done them before where they have been torn or a combination of the both. Um, you could ink around them individually you could add embossing powder. Oh, you could add embossing powder. Here's an idea. Hmm, something to play around with. So, I am the Canny Crafter. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you next time. Bye!